Hello everybody! I hope that you are doing well today. I am today cooking from the How Not to Die cookbook. Very big title by Dr. Michael Grieger. So Michael Grieger was interested in creating a whole plant, plant-based recipe book. Today we are making a champion, <coughs> champion vegetable chili and it looks like this. So I find this to be a super exciting recipe for one, everything goes in one pot. So instead of sauteing with oil, we are going to saute with water. So I have two pots going. I've got a double batch for me and a batch for a friend. And there's a little vegetable broth that's warming up in there. And I've got a lot of things prepped over here because once you get going, it's all about the go, go, go. So first thing you might guess in chili, onion. Totally, right? So when I'm doing an onion, it's in half, long way, quarter turn, short way. And then I go ahead and do the other half, same idea. Quarter turn, short way. And then you're good to go. I peeled it ahead of time so that I'm not working with a bunch of trash in the shot at the same time. Otherwise, if you and I weren't together, I would probably just leave all my trash on the counter and then throw it away at the end. So that helps me to move a little faster too. So for me, today is a really busy day and I have this short window of time to get the food in the pot, cook it up, and then have it be ready. It's a Wednesday, which means my oldest and I eat at 4.30, and then we eat a late snack. The rest of my family eats at 5.30. So but once those kids start coming home, it's all about the homework. So it's about 1 o'clock now in my life. I had a morning meeting, and now here I am throwing together dinner, which is going to work out great, and it's going to serve lunch tomorrow. So this little bit of effort that I'm going to put in is going to give two meals, one of which, well, all of them, which really are served when people need to eat. That's a huge consideration when I'm thinking about what kinds of foods to add to the menu. How many pots am I going to need on what day? Because life is busy, right? We don't have time all the time to have like a three-course situation on our hands. So this is purposefully a one pot meal that can go together really fast, even if you're making a triple batch. So as I get all my onion going, all that I'm gonna do is give them a quick stir in the pot so that they are appropriately moving around. After the onion, celery. Now the actual recipe calls for a half a cup. If you've watched me, you know I don't measure. I just cut up a few stalks of celery. So as you can see, I grab a whole bunch and then I just go probably like quarter inches in this rocking motion, moving my hand down as I go. And if I, depending on what I've got, sometimes I have a whole stalk, I just take the loose end of the stalk first and I start cutting. I cut the whole thing and I stick it in a soup because I'm making a huge batch of soup, right? And then for my double batch, I'll take the rest, probably in two batches here. So celery is a great addition to soups, in this case, chili. And it's easy to put in there. It's not like a huge amount of nutritional value, but it adds some beautiful flavor. It adds some texture. And um, it's not terribly expensive either. So all kind of wins for the celery. I like celery in soup way more than I like it as a raw vegetable. So when those winter months come around, I feel like we kind of get our fill of celery in this house. So very quickly, that's probably one or two ginormous things of celery. So once I've got all those together, same idea, give them a turn in the pot. And I don't worry when I'm doing stuff like this, like, oh, did this thing cook for this amount of time? And did that thing cook for that amount of time? I just throw as I get it in because it's all going to cook 
and work together so I don't make a big stink about it. Next thing is mushrooms, two to three cups of any kind. So as it turns out, the kind that was available was, oh, look at me, always having my doors open, was a, um, a button mushroom. It's not like, ooh, yay, a button mushroom. It's just what was available. And they're kind of large, so I'm just breaking them up a little bit because we have littles in the house who won't really enjoy that kind of a thing. And the people that I share meals with also have littles in the house. Uh, but mushrooms will, again, add a whole lot of like texture to your food. They won't add a lot of nutritional value. That's the first one. I have to do three of these. But they will add that meatiness feel, and they're a beautiful flavor. Um, they really take on the flavor of whatever you've got going. So these happen to be kind of pre-cut. That's just the way that the store was offering them. Um, I used to shop on Monday mornings, but life has gotten busier, so I've been shopping on Saturdays or Sundays, and everybody is shopping on those days. So you kind of have to take what is there, and so you hear me say a lot of times, like, oh, this thing wasn't available, and goes another one, and we got one more coming here. So chili is so wonderful, and if you have the time... You can make it the day before and let the flavors meld, reheat, and you've really got something. But if you don't have the time, uh, the extra 10 to 30 minutes of just simmering will meld your flavors reasonably. It's, it's not the same as far as I'm concerned uh, as if you just let it meld in the fridge overnight like that. Oh, so good. But do what you got to. It's, it's like I always say. Always just do what you've got to. So throw the rest of that in. And I am always, my opinion is always just a little more on the veggies. So with both of these, I'm just going to give them an extra cup. Because it said two to three cups, so I'm going three, right? I'm not going to go two. If all I had was two, I would go, okay, we've at least met the minimum requirement. But I have more than two, so I'm going to do more than two. And I could do this with a knife instead of break it up with my hands, but mushrooms are pretty soft. So I'm just breaking them up with my hands. Uh, but do whatever. If you don't want to touch it, then don't, obviously. Don't do something that makes you sad. Okay. So now that all the mushrooms are in, we'll give it another quick stir. <clears throat> You can see the onion is translucent, so if you're worried about like, oh, is everything going to get cooked enough? It's totally going to get cooked enough. No worries. And I really like this chili. I was really skeptical when I first read the recipe, uh, but there are so many good things in here. It's really a delightful chili. Okay, next thing is red peppers chopped and seeded. So I have hollowed out my pepper. And you can cut peppers half dozen to a hundred different ways. So on any given day, you will see me cut them slightly differently, depending on my mood, I swear. It's like totally random as to what I choose. Uh, I think that's the beauty of cooking. Do something that makes you happy on that day. I think that um, chopping vegetables is a bit cathartic for me. It's like an opportunity for me just to think it's almost like stillness, even though I'm moving, so I really do not mind the act of standing over a pot, throwing a few things in, knowing that I'm creating something that's going to make other people so happy. It just thrills me. And then the house is always full of these great smells, which is another total bonus. And if you really get going... It moves quite quickly. So, I mean, imagine if you were just making one batch. You'd be going three times as fast as me. So, for our last pepper here, when it gets down to that bottom, I flip it on a flatter end. And these are the same as the onions. It's cut it the long way, quarter turn, cut it the short way. And peppers, too, add a lot of really great flavor to chili, so you frequently see peppers in chili recipes. Um, when I would make a beef chili, 
I didn't add the pepper. I didn't find that it was adding a huge flavor profile that made me so happy. However, in vegetarian chilies, I love it. I love the extra texture and um, I love the flavor that it brings. So we'll come back over, give everything a little stir, make sure I'm not cooking too fast. Also, it adds such beautiful color. You gotta love when you're doing the whole plant work, how you just always have these meals full of color. Okay, zucchini is next. So we come on over. When I do zucchinis, I would frequently um, cut them into fourths, which I think I actually will still do here, again, because we have all the littles. So that allows me to take one zucchini and cut it all in a row. And I'm being a little wide with these, a little wider than I might otherwise, because they're going to be in this chili. So, you know, about so. There's another example. And that runs into the pot or it gets tossed in. It probably doesn't have legs, so it probably can't run. But so you can very quickly work through a couple of vegetables like that, especially if you just do a little bit of extra prep work in the beginning, right? So they're all washed, they're all de-skinned, or the ends are cut off so that I can just go boom, 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 right through the whole bunch of them. And, uh, you know, just to say, zucchini in the store, they can vary in size a lot. So I often just go for a nice sized one because again, you can never have too many vegetables. You just can't. Vegetables are amazing. So it's a soft vegetable. You can make quick work of it. It's totally great. That gets thrown in. And then we'll come back over. Make sure that those are appropriately integrated into the whole pot. Same over here. We're getting very close on the chopping of vegetables and we'll end up at the canned goods very shortly. But before we do, we are at garlic. So I've, the recipe calls for two cloves of garlic and I always find myself doing just a wee bit extra on that. So I'll give three cloves to this one, especially because these were tiny cloves. Sometimes a clove is really large, and that's the funny thing about uh, food that you buy, right? It's, it, it all grows at different rates, and then you're left to figure out what one clove actually is. So don't freak out, you know. You really can't go wrong with garlic as far as I'm concerned. Unless you have some sort of an allergy or your body reacts funny to it, enjoy it. Um, I'm using a mincer today. You see, I just take the blunt end of a knife to get it out of there. I go and stuff everything back in that didn't get fully chopped up. And then we go again. Sometimes I just cut it on the cutting board. But it does take me probably a little bit more time to cut it on the cutting board. And so I'm just being mindful of my time today and moving through as quickly as I possibly can. Um, also, this recipe calls for some serrano peppers, I believe. Maybe it's jalapenos. Some spicier peppers, and you would so be welcome to do that. We take the heat out for the kids, and then if we ourselves want heat, we just add in some hot sauce. If it's an Asian dish, we add some, um, some sriracha. So we add our, our heat that way after the fact to keep the littles from dying. So let me just put this in the sink. Um, but that said, sometimes little ones don't mind. So yeah, it calls for a small hot chili pepper. We just don't add that. And then I'm going to incorporate the garlic. Garlic is being added pretty late in this meal because of how quickly it cooks. So otherwise you would normally add it all in a little earlier. Um, also in recipes, I often add celery quick because celery takes a little longer to cook, in my experience, my opinion. So from here, we're adding three tablespoons of tomato paste. And I have roughly learned that that's like a third of this container. And then I would need the rest of it for my double batch over here. So 
Once I've got my tomato paste in, because it's such a thick substance, I usually kind of mash it into the vegetable a little bit to start getting it to incorporate. And then I move it around. Because otherwise you'll just find that you've got these big, thick areas of tomato paste. But tomato paste is a great concentrate. It'll thicken your sauce a little bit, which you always kind of want with a chili. And it'll add a really beautiful tomato flavor. Same thing over here. I'm going to give it a good mash into the veggies so that I don't have to do all that work. So kind of pressing down or into the sides of your pan and then moving it around. The heat will also help, of course. So that moves around. And as we do that, we're going to add in our spices. Yay, spices! So, it is two tablespoons of chili powder per batch. And so I actually am kind of cool with that. But even in a large batch, I, I usually don't go more than three. So I'm being very careful not to fill it all the way. So there's my chili powder. And this is a bit unusual. He uses some turmeric, a quarter teaspoon, um, mostly because turmeric is so good for you in, in a reasonable dose. So a lot of people use it for anti-inflammatory, which is great, but it's primary, like what we know of it, um, is, is starting to really get even broader than that. So I'm going to move these around, incorporate that chili powder and turmeric so that it starts to kind of get that experience of sauteing. You release that aroma, you release those flavors. It looks so beautiful. And if you don't have a Dutch oven like this, again, a regular pot is just fine. Um, sometimes people really like the heavy duty for what it can do. I kind of like that the heavy duty holds the heat a little bit longer. So since I have it, I'm using it. Um, we actually have a really large one here, as you can see, and it has served our family well. I'm very thankful for it. I've got a pepper down in there. Okay, so, and even if your recipe suggested that you need to let those flavors meld for like five minutes, they start to do it within 30 seconds to a minute. So don't worry too much again about like, did I get it there for long enough? From here, we're adding our tomato, and it's 14 ounces of diced, undrained tomato per batch, and that's where it starts to get a lot faster and easier. You're going to get to the dumping stage. <laughs> boo-boo, boo-boo, you just hear off, off screen, something funny. I go ahead, and we're actually going to serve this today over baked potatoes. You could serve it over black rice, sweet potatoes. You could serve it with chips on the side, whatever makes you happy. You could serve it with tofu sour cream if you're working on the whole plant, plant-based thing. From here, we're going to do beans. So the recipe calls for a pinto bean. I'm using a small red bean, which is basically the same. I just like the flavor of this one in particular, so I often go and grab that small red bean when I'm shopping for kidney beans or pinto beans, but actually I like pinto beans just fine. So really, the, the moral of the story is mix it up for yourself a little bit every now and again. So that gets incorporated in, and the beans are pre-cooked, so once you're at this stage, you're kind of almost done. From here, we're adding a cup of corn. So I have a bag of frozen corn here. Super simple. Again, it adds a little bit of color and a little bit of texture, which I think is just beautiful. And this is a, a much lighter looking because of the zucchini and the corn than say the three bean chili, if you Google that recipe. It comes from the same cookbook. There's slightly different flavor profiles. Um, and this one has a different makeup of veggies in it. So this one is so cute. 
And the thing about baked potatoes is I can just pop them in the oven quick and then be done with it. Okay, we're almost done. A couple of spices and we're out. So this is a savory spice blend that comes from his book at the front. There's like onion powder, garlic powder. Uh, because I know that our families appreciate a little bit of salt, I'm adding that in. He doesn't use salt in his recipes. And then he does a quarter teaspoon of paprika. So I have a slideable measuring. See, it goes. I have one for tablespoons and teaspoons, so the gamut on teaspoons and tablespoons, which I love. It works great for me. And my guess is we need to add just a wee bit of water. But before I do, let me just go ahead and give these a stir. You see how quickly these filled up and how quickly they went from being just some vegetables in the bottom of a pot to really being, oh yeah, that looks like a chili, right? And how it's really not that much effort to do a little bit extra. So if you want to, you could freeze some of these or something like that. And same deal, like if you're actually just cooking for one, have the recipe. Okay, so let me just see. Hi again. Once we've got all of that, we're gonna add in an extra half cup of broth, but I've already added all my broth paste, so I'm just gonna do a little bit of water. Very quickly, come back over here and do the half cup there and the full cup there. And then this directive says to allow it to simmer for 45 minutes, stirring occasionally. And that's where you get that notion of like, oh, okay, I'm letting those flavors meld together. And I'm actually kind of trying to scrape down the sides a little bit, just because it's a little cleaner when you go to clean up after the fact. I mean, how many of us do all the dishes after our cooking? Like, right, when we're doing all those dishes, we want to make it easy on ourselves, at least as easy as we possibly can. So everything is together in the pot. We're at 22 minutes on a triple batch. That is hugely fast. And while it's doing that 45 minute simmer, I can pop my potatoes in. So that takes a little bit of time, right? Like you couldn't come home at six o'clock and then simmer your food unless you wanted to eat at eight o'clock. But you could do this the night before and then come home totally exhausted, throw some food in a pot or throw it in your microwave and then have dinner. It's just beautiful. So I hope that you enjoyed that. This is one of my favorites. I love chili. I love the winter. It snowed today after being 60 yesterday. So it's a great day for chili. But anyways, I hope you have a great day and I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.